Becoming a, a mom, I made me realize that I underestimated myself. And it's because I had to not plan and pretty much be okay to fail before Weston. I was very hard on myself on failing and I was actually afraid to try things. Mm. I thought, I'm, I'm going to fail already. Like, I'm, I shouldn't even try it. What's up, fam? It is Jay <laughs> Williams. I am here with Coach Wendy and Coach Katie. And Coach Rebecca not feeling well today. <laughs> she's out, so Men down. she's we're holding a vigil in her <laughs> in her honor. So today we're gonna talk about we didn't plan for Coach Rebecca not to be here. Yeah. But no. sometimes things happen that are not yeah. according to the plan. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, she did not plan to not be feeling well. Let's put that back right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So uh, she did not plan to not be feeling well, but it's all going to turn out in, well in the end for her. And it kind of kind of got us talking like we some of the best things that have happened in in our lives happen because we don't have a plan or things don't go the way that we expected them to go. Mm-hmm. And so we were we were talking about that, like as it relates to our lives, because, you know, looking back on the last few years, some of the biggest lessons that you've learned are sometimes it's not it's OK to not have a plan. Right. Yeah. Right. Or just deal with the cards that you're dealt. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you, Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about a time when things did not go according to plan. And how did you how did you deal with it? And what did you take away from it? Yeah. Uh, so this is a 2021. Yep. And this is the time where I found out that I was pregnant with my son, Weston. Mm. Yeah. That wasn't the plan? That was not the plan for me to get <laughs> pregnant in <at> 2021. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah, did not plan for that to happen. It's a big shocker. Got it. <laughs> yeah. For me. <laughs> I actually didn't find out that I was pregnant until like maybe two, almost two months. Yeah. Oh, man. I was two months in and I had no idea that I was pregnant. Yeah. So I definitely did not see this coming and I wasn't prepared at all for a baby. Yeah, what was that? What was that like? What did that feel like? Um, I was a bit confused because at that point, um, the person that I happened to get pregnant um, from, um, we weren't together. We were actually broken up, and the very first thing that I thought to myself was like, "Oh my god, I have to reach out to this person again. Mm. I don't want to talk to this person." Mm. Now I'm pretty much stuck with this person for until Mm. you know forever kind of so a lot of that was going through my mind when I first found out that I was pregnant um the second thing um I thought to myself well I don't know if I want to have a baby right now Mm. like I don't think I'm not ready to have a baby right Mm. now not prepare for it yeah um so that was like the other second thing and so so everything up to that point that you all the things that you thought you were going to do, all the goals that you had, you're just like, that yeah. stuff's off the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons we want to talk about this today is because this happens to our clients a lot, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I mean, yep, getting pregnant doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> They're like, but, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, again, Jesus. Again. <laughs> Every single time. No. <laughs> No, but like what does happen is, you know, you, you make all of these plans and mm-hmm. then, you know, things just change. Yeah. And then I was, I was a person who always wanted to have kids. Like I always talked about having kids and I love babies. And, you know, at that point after that relationship, I even told to, I thought to myself, you know what? I was, actually, I'm getting into my thirties. It's okay if I don't have kids. Yeah. Like I'm actually kind of happy that I'm able to do all the things that I want to do with like just me. So like I was loving my life at that point and i already had said that it's okay it's okay if i don't have kids and then bam <laughs> no <Nope. laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> and then it's like life was like what, oh what are you talking about <laughs> so which was i think at that point it was kind of funny i giggled a little bit but then i, I cried after because i was like oh man um it's yeah. happening so. yeah i mean that's one of the bigger things that can happen right yeah. In, yeah. in your life and it's funny there's like it's like four or five sort of big events that really change people's lives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, relationship related. So starting a relationship, ending a relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, birthing another human, Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, that would be kind of relationship related. There's uh, moving, Mm. right? So Mm -hmm. going from, you know, one place to another, which is something you've done Mm -hmm. uh, since 2020. And then there is like changing jobs. You're spending, you know, eight hours a day at something and then you're doing something else. Like these are major life changes. Yeah. And it's funny because... 
I think most people think of pregnancy and marriage as like a major life change, but people don't always think of moving as a major, major life change or changing jobs yeah. as a major change. And sometimes they don't even think of relationships that right, way, right. right? But even if you are like me, you have no feelings, right? <laughs> they, it's still very disruptive mm. and it really throws off all of your kind of plans and you have yeah. to like reset everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you had this moment and you were like, okay, I'm, I'm going to have, you decided you're going to have this kid. Yes. Right. Yes. So like, I, I mean, it was just like everything else went out the window. Like you just come up with another plan. Like how did you? Yeah. Well, I had options, right? And like you mentioned earlier, I decided to keep the baby. Um, the other thing that I did do is, um, I decided to be a single mom mm -hmm. after discussing, you know, letting the other person know. The person didn't seem like they wanted to be in my baby's life or in my life at that point. So I made a choice of um, me deciding what I was going to do. And I decided to keep the baby and, you know, be a single mom at that point. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I had no idea how I was going to do it. Yeah. How did you, those are two, I mean, keeping the baby, mm -hmm. yeah, right? is a big decision and yeah. then being a single mom is a big decision like did you make that on your own like how who did you talk to like how did you come to that conclusion mm -hmm. um i did talk to a lot of people but what i found out that a lot of people had a lot of opinions mm. and mm. that wasn't helping me at all mm. i was actually getting more confused on what i actually oh, wanted mm. and um i i actually told people the people that i had told that i was pregnant at that point they try to help, right, by telling me what I should do. Mm. And I know it came from a good place, but at that point, I was just so confused. I was also hormonal, right? Mm. I was two months pregnant already, and I j it just wasn't helping. So what I actually did is I worked out for, like, and that's one thing I always can rely on, on me mm -hmm. making myself feel a little better, even if it's just, like, half a percent. It always makes me feel better. So, and I didn't really think about it at that point for those two weeks. Mm. I just kind of kept going with my normal routine. Not that I ignored it or pretended like it wasn't there, but I just didn't think about it for two weeks. So you gave yourself some time yeah. to like process yeah. this thing. Yes. Yeah. Versus making a decision like when um, I have all my feelings and, you know, I didn't know at that point what to do mm. or going based on what people thought that I should do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so gave myself some space, gave myself some time. And one thing that stood out for me, because my grandma, she, um, she was a single mom too as well. Um, she had 10 kids on her own and, Wait, um, that that's more crazy. than a single mom. Was that? <laughs> she had 10 kids. Yeah. Oh my she gosh. had 10 kids as a single parent. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord. Wow. Yeah, that's, she did. My, actually incredible. my dad never met his dad too. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and I thought about her. I yeah. really thought about her when, you know, when I was going through those two weeks and I told myself, you know what? I actually want this baby. I always wanted to be a mom mm -hmm. and this is, this is my time, right? Yeah. I'm not going to not have this baby because I don't, I'm going based on what this other person's needs, right? The mm -hmm. other, the other person didn't want the baby. Yeah. So it's, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to keep it because I actually want the baby. Mm -hmm. I always yeah. wanted to be a mom and this is, this is the time. Maybe in my mind, I saw it very differently. I planned it very differently with a person who wanted the baby. Maybe we were, you know, yeah. together, living together. That's not the case. It, things doesn't happen as planned, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what that's what I kind of kind of thought about when uh, for during those two weeks. And then I also thought about my grandma. Yeah. yeah, she was able to, you know, keep alive ten kids on her own, and she was able to provide for them. Also, this was like back home in El Salvador, not here, yeah. right? Where you don't make any money, yeah. right? She's able to make it, then hell yeah, I can make mm -hmm. it too as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are the two things that definitely helped me. Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided to, that I, I'm, I'm going to go for it. And so once you made that decision, it was just like all the pressure was off. Like now Yeah, now a now little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like I didn't think that, I, or I, I didn't think that I had to, you know, be financially stable or, you know, have another parent or like, I didn't think of the other things. I, they weren't as important. Hmm. I think the most important thing for me at that point is, do I want this? Yeah. Right. Am I doing it for myself? Right. 
And that's pretty much all I cared about mm. up yeah. until, you know, even through the pregnancy, right? That's what I kind of yeah. hold on to as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. so that's so good. Like yeah, that's, that's really re- like really that's really important. I mean, yeah. I, we're talking about a big life change. Yeah. Now, but this could be anything. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. It's just like, you know, you you're you're starting a new like nutrition plan and yeah. your spouse says, I'm not doing this. Yeah. And you, you know, you need to cook me whatever enchiladas right. every yeah. night. Right. And it's like you might need some time to process that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, once you then you have to make a decision that's yeah. based on what you want. Yeah. Not based on what everybody else wants or yeah. what everybody else thinks you should do. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that you can be at peace with whatever you decide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then once you make a decision, then it's like, okay, you might have to have some uncomfortable conversations. Mm-hmm. But if you never make a decision, yeah, then you're just in that like yeah. ether of yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. That's that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I you know, and one of the other things you were saying you learned over this last couple of years is like I mean, you're in better shape than you were before you were pregnant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, becoming a, a mom just in general did. I, I it just I I made me realize that I underestimated myself like before you know mm-hmm. before Weston, mm-hmm. um, and it's because I had to not plan. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's part of it. Like I had to you know think like on my feet more, mm-hmm. right? And pretty much be okay to fail, mm-hmm. right? I think before before Weston, I was very hard on myself on failing, and I was actually afraid to try things mm-hmm. because I already knew to myself. I I thought I'm I'm gonna fail already. Like I'm I shouldn't even try it. Yeah. Why should I try? Because I already know that I'm just not gonna make it or yeah. whatever it is. And like now, it's I don't I don't think that way anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's because you know with with you know becoming a single mom right and deciding yeah. to keep a baby on yeah. my own and yeah. i wasn't on my own i had my support right but i had to make that decision right yeah. not not my not my parents not and not anyone it was it's up to me yeah at this yeah. point so yeah. um and i think that has really helped me mentally with with everything after that like yeah. especially with like my fitness um, even work, right? Coaching my clients too as well. Mm-hmm. Just personal life too as well, I think. Um, so yeah, I, it's been, I think, probably the best thing that has happened to me, mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess you can say. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's, I, I told you this when you came back. It was like after a couple of months when you're back, it's like you're just a different person. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I 100 percent. Yeah, that's yeah. It for sure. Yeah. And, and that was it, it's really just a matter of kind of letting go mm-hmm. and accepting that you have what it takes to make it through whatever comes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's what I thought about my grandma. She is like one tough lady. Mm-hmm. Like she she and that's what I told to myself I was like, I can do this. Like my grandma was able to do raise 10 kids on her own. And like, I'm, she wasn't making like a lot of money. Like it's back home. Like you don't make a lot of money back then. She was able to, you know, keep my, all her kids alive. So, yeah. you know, and that definitely helped me too. And just not doubt myself, but you know, at the end I had to decide, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. That's, that's really good. I mean, this is something that you kind of learned at, uh, at your previous mm-hmm. job as well. Right. Yeah. You said, you said something about like every job. It's kind of like... Yeah, that like what you were saying reminds me so much of that, of how like, oh, I'm more willing to lean into things that scare me or that I might fail with because I know that no matter what, like I can figure out some way. Mm-hmm. Like it makes me curious about some of the puzzles that you've had to solve along the way. Yeah. But definitely like through tree work, um, we encountered challenges like that all the time. And I, I was telling these guys beforehand that I had a crew leader one time who would explain it as every single job that we were given was a puzzle that had to be figured out or like Mm -hmm. a game to win. Mm. And you weren't always given like the right pieces or the right amount of money or the right time frame, but it was like part of the fun of it for him and he made it fun for us. It's like figuring out how are we gonna get it done with what we had in the time that we had. And like sometimes it, it forced us to get really creative. But when we when we were in that line of thinking, it wasn't like, can we get it done or not? That wasn't the question. Mm-hmm. The question was like, we will get it done. All right, then let's like the job then becomes figuring out how the puzzles or yeah. like pieces are gonna fit together. Yeah. 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 But again, it's kind of like the decision 
That's right. You know, you make the decision like this is happening. Yeah, this is happening. <laughs> yeah. This you know, is once, what we've got. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like once you sign the contract or whatever, it's like we're getting this done. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's not a matter of if, but, you know, but when. Yeah. And and so then you just do whatever it takes to, to figure it out. Yeah. And that's kind of how you break out of your comfort zone. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think this is... It, the reason I want to talk about this, I think this is so relevant yeah. for everybody at every stage in life, mm-hmm. but especially when you're trying to make like kind of difficult habit changes. Yeah. Right. Like a lot of times what we see, and I was just talking to another coach this morning about this. It's like, what do you do if a client is just not that bought in? Mm-hmm. And it's like, they have to make a decision. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to decide yeah that this is the thing that I want and I am willing to do whatever it takes to get Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Right. And it's like, maybe it will take longer. Maybe it'll be harder. Maybe you'll have to have more uncomfortable conversations, but the decision is made. So you going for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's part of when we talk about goals, you know, we're always talking about setting goals for clients and everyone needs to have a goal. That's part of the reason is because we want to force a decision. Yeah. Right. Like if you aren't deciding to do something, then we're just kind of hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Waiting for something good to happen. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you don't have to decide for it to be your number one either. But you do have to decide for it to be your number two or your number three or number four or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't have to sacrifice everything. That's right. Yeah. But you have to do what it takes for yeah. as long as it takes to get yeah. it done. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes that will mean like, hey, this is going to have to be number one, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Maybe not forever, but maybe for a week, mm-hmm. maybe six weeks, right? Yep. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. That's not your whole life. Yeah. 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 And I think that's, that's it. It's like even having a baby, obviously, you know, your kid is really important to you. Yeah. But, you know, right now you're here. The kid's not here. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So yeah. there is going to be a time where he's not the number one. Right. Right. It's like, great. I have to work. I have to, you know, like I want to work out. I, you know, want to see my friends, all this other stuff. Like you're still way up there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. But it's not everything. Right. And it's not, you know, it's, it's kind of like you made that decision. You're going to make this happen. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you just, you just do whatever it takes. And sometimes that means everything. Sometimes it's just some of the stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what was something that came up that you had to figure out? Um, so I think uh, I've been, so it's like, it's, 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 I mean, we, we need like maybe two days to talk about (laughs) it, but I think that the biggest thing that I had to figure out is like, okay, how am I going to provide for my kid? Right. And the very first thing is like, well, (laughs) I even told Jay, I, I, I messed around with Jay and Mike. I was like, do you guys still want me if I'm pregnant? (laughs) 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 like if I and that was my thing like am I gonna be able to keep like you know continue to coach people while my pregnancy because I never done it so Uh I don't know if I wasn't able to do that and um same thing like you know I told them that I was pregnant and everyone was pretty happy for me and especially like this place was super supportive and made my pregnancy so it was just amazing like I it was great with all the support but that was the number one thing that I had to think to myself is like, okay, am I going to be able to provide for my kid and myself? Right. Um, and thankfully my parents stepped in for that. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, I didn't even ask. It was, it was them who, you know, who asked and told, mm-hmm. told me that they were going to be there for me. So I moved in with them Yeah, and more so my mom, my mom had three kids of her own. She knows about this the best. So why not, you know, come to a person who has been, who had gone through pregnancy three times. So just basically move in with my parents and with my mom who could, you know, help me go through my pregnancy and not go by myself on my own. So I, I would say I didn't, my, I wasn't on my own, right? I didn't have a partner, mm-hmm. right? Like I had planned in the past how I envisioned it, right? Yeah. But I had support and that was pretty much more than enough that I needed at that very beginning. So that that was the number one thing that I had to figure out. Right. And thankfully, my parents, you know, they were there for me and they took me in. And, you know, that was that was that was it for that part. Yeah. 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 You didn't even live with them for that long. No, I didn't. Um, I moved in, I think, when I was eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. 
But before that, I was living with roommates, yeah. right? And that was the other thing too, right? I had roommates and, you know, at that point, my roommates, we had to go our separate ways because mm. they didn't want to be with a crying baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, different so, lifestyle. Yeah, different <laughs> lifestyle. So I had to get my own place, right? But then again, I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I'm going to do this. And then that's when my parents stepped in and, you know, I moved in with my parents. Yeah. So made made it a little bit easier. Um yeah. Did, so I, I'm curious. So now you have this, you decide you're going to do this. Did you sit down and like write down like, here's, here's how everything's mm-hmm. going to go? Oh my God, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I so did. And uh, it was stressful. It mm. was so stressful actually mapping things around. <laughs> right. mm. It was probably the worst thing I, 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 I did at that point. Because yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was driving me crazy. And I was just, I, I, it was super stressful. Mm-hmm. So... I had to stop because I think at that point I was like, you know what? I got pregnant. I didn't even, I didn't even plan for this. Yeah. So why am I even planning this for now? Like, it's just, it's useless at that point. Uh-huh. Mm. So I did, like I did mapped it out from like, from the very beginning, like where I was going to deliver, yeah. name, like every single thing. Like yeah. also, you know, budgeting wise, right? Yeah. Diapers, like to the, to the very detail. Yeah. And that was super stressful, yeah. and I, I absolutely hated that part. Yeah. Did you did you stick to those plans, or did no, you toss them out? I just <laughs> <tossed them. laughs> no, yeah. no, I, oh I, 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 you know, I feel, at that point I was like, this is a waste of my time. Mm. Yeah, like I could it's be, happen. yeah, yeah, it, yeah. The, I, I could just be maybe going for a walk, right, or you know, working out, right. At this point, this is useless. At this mm. point. Mm. Mm. Like it's things are not gonna go this way yeah. <laughs> at yeah. that point, yeah. Yeah. and it took me like a week to realize that that was that it wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna be helpful. Yeah, yeah. but I did map it out. I like wrote every single yeah. thing. Yeah. that I thought it was gonna you know help me. And so you had to have a few uncomfortable conversations. Yes. So like you said, one of them was, I, I don't know why this was uncomfortable for you, but like, hey, you're still gonna want a pregnant lady. It's like. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I I don't know, right? I mean, I know that you guys were gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i just i i just didn't know right it's like me not knowing because i'm the type who plans everything yeah yeah. right yeah. so this is something super different to me right yeah. i didn't know i just didn't know because it wasn't my thing i'm yeah. used to planning everything i'm 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 a type of person who plans their outfit the day before oh, like i nice. pick my clothes <laughs> the de- the night before the next day yeah i i'm that type right yeah. so this is it's like a whole different new territory that I wasn't, right. I wasn't, you know, yeah. I didn't know how to handle it. <laughs> huh. Yeah. I'm the opposite of that. Really? Um, <laughs> I, yes. I was taught that from the very, since I was very little Yeah. and I was going to like, um, private school, Catholic school, mm-hmm. yeah. you had to pick your clothes before, mm-hmm. yeah. before. So, I so you, once you kind of toss that plan out the window, you're just gonna, you're just like, okay, whatever needs to happen, I'll just make it happen. I was going with the flow. Yeah. Has it been like that since then? Or have you gotten back to some planning? Um, I got back to some planning what's needed for me, yeah. but for the most part, I want to say, no, I, I, I let it go. Yeah. Like, yeah. I learned. So you, uh, you're making, basing your decisions on what? Like, you're just kind of going with the flow of life no, or do you have like... I, I mean, I, I take it day by day, right? So like, for example, um, I remember we did the, the competition, I forget, the Forgotten? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was probably the first... The first time that I felt like my, like my old, not my old self, but that I felt fit after having Weston, Mm -hmm. right? Especially I remember when that very first workout where I was thinking of scaling and you were like, no, you're not going to scale. You're going to do this Mm because you can do this. And up until that point, I was still doubting myself Mm -hmm. because I was like, I don't think so. Like I haven't worked out. I haven't, you know with my nutrition, I haven't been so great, you know, I'm still breastfeeding. Like there was just so many mm-hmm. butts, butts going through my head at yeah. that point. And, um, and I just went with it. Yeah, and then like the very, very second <laughs> yeah. before I even lift like the sandbag, I remember it was a sandbag. That was the thing that I was afraid that I was going to fail. I was like, you know what? If I fail, so what? Like, uh-huh. at least I tried. Uh-huh. That's what I told myself. At least I give it my all. Yeah. Mm. And I was fine. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So after that, I um, I started to clean some habits, right? Kind of started working on things. So, you know, probably doing uh, being active with my nutrition a little bit more. And not where I'm at right now, but just doing little things 
that will help me get back into me feeling like my athlete self. Mm -hmm. And then also loving training as much as I, I, I did before mm -hmm. having a baby, right? Because, yeah. I mean, it took me about four or five months, almost six months to get back into, you know, after having a baby. So I, I still, at that point, I still didn't feel like myself. Yeah. And then once we finished that, competition we placed third place mm -hmm. yeah i was like Which we Holy wouldn't crap. have done if you hadn't have done that <laughs> 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 seriously yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we did really well yeah and we wouldn't have done that if you hadn't have done that if you would have scaled that one thing yeah. we wouldn't have finished third place yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so that was like another reminder like hey you 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 un you're still underestimating yourself yeah. yeah right and so like now i take it day by day uh and you know with my nutrition and my training, uh, I see it as feedback, right? So week by week, I usually go, right? So like, let's say the week my back squats didn't feel great. Okay, why didn't it feel great? Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't get enough sleep. Okay, prioritize next week sleep, whatever the case mm -hmm. is. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I still do some planning. Yeah. Um, I don't do it as much as I did before. Before I would spend like, you know, hours and hours and hours, like monthly, right? Yeah. Planning my whole entire month. Yeah. And like now I'm even considering hiring a coach so I don't have to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't have to do the planning, yeah. right? So like things like that, I'm more open-minded to other things that I thought to myself that I had to do myself or I, it yeah. has to be this way. Yeah, yeah. right. All just that. I mean, that's the big benefit of having a kid. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's really great. I mean, basically, it sounds like you're putting yourself in situations where you have to figure it out a little bit more, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Just like little bit uncomfortable situations. Yeah. Like, let's see if this will work. I might fail. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, and I think failing is a big one. I'm more, I'm okay to fail now. Yeah. I don't see like failure. I'm saying more like feedback. That's that's what I tell my clients. Yeah, it's not that you're failing, or if we have like an off scan, it's, it's just feedback, right? Let's just see what we can do to help with this yeah um i think for me before failing was like a really bad thing for me mm -hmm. like it was not okay for me to fail yeah that was like more my mentality i think mm -hmm. before like now i'm actually okay i mean i don't feel the best when i fail i still mm -hmm. have my feelings or whatever but i'm okay with it i'll get over it right mm -hmm. yeah and i i learn from that and i try to do better after that but yeah i'm 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 okay to fail and yeah. i don't beat mm -hmm. myself up like i did before mm. Yeah, it's, yeah it's so really much, good. so much good stuff in there. I mean, I, I just think that's like basically what you've the the idea is part of why you planned everything before is because you were so afraid of failing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And now without that fear, it's like you don't have to plan every little detail yeah. to make sure that it goes well. Yes. Yeah. Because you've experience this so if mm -hmm. i you plan things and then they don't go well and yeah. then you just fall apart right because it's just like i plan uh, this was my plan yeah. what the hell am i gonna yeah. do now yeah 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 and um yeah i mean that's that's how you make progress yeah yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. if if everything went to plan you wouldn't need us yeah that's, that's <laughs> it's just like, yeah 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 so you know <laughs> it's it it it, it, it's, it really is like a process of getting comfortable just being where you're at yeah up leading up until the birth too as well i had a birth plan like you know they recommend you to do the birth plan did not go as planned either mm -hmm. yeah right yeah. i wasn't expecting for my son to be in the nicu for 13 days and almost lost his life i almost lost him when he was mm. born yeah i did not see that coming right and that was like another thing <laughs> you know with that whole me getting pregnant and then almost losing my son spending spending 13 days in the NICU, I wasn't able to hold him like until he was three days old. Yeah. That's not what wow. they tell you, right? They tell yeah. you, oh, you know, make sure you have the bonding. I didn't have the bonding. Mm -hmm. My son was fighting for his life when he was mm -hmm. born. I didn't yeah. even know that my, my son wasn't breathing until like he was in the little, you know, mm. incubator. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, I even planned, you know, my birth plan and it didn't go as yeah. planned. So it's like another yeah. thing that kind of just hit me and was like, you know what? No planning for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really like, it's a really useful skill to, yeah, really to learn, to, to, to be able to adapt. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. 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 And this is the thing, like when we come up with plans for our clients, we have no expectation that it's going to go to plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's just like this is a guideline. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. If all things are perfect, yep. 
then this is this is what you're going to do to get to where you need to be. Yeah. Right. But all things are never perfect, yeah. and we cannot predict the future. Yeah, no, so you can't. So it's just like, okay, well, let's let's see what happens, yep. and then we will change the plan, or yeah. we'll come up Iterate. with a new plan. Yeah. 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 Okay, we learned that, you know, yeah. whenever whatever something bad happens at work that you know we go to the m&ms okay fantastic yep. like that was a new thing yeah <laughs> that yeah. wasn't part of the plan so let's figure out like how we're gonna yeah. deal with the m&m thing yeah and, you know and it and it, the the deal when dealing with it might be hey you know maybe we go get a new job yeah mm-hmm. that's not part of the plan right yeah. <laughs> right but if your job is driving you so crazy that you're eating for stress and like it's ruining your health yeah is it worth it yeah, yeah. you know and so you start to kind of get further and further and you realize like you know if you are focused on the outcome that you want yeah. mm-hmm. then you will get there eventually yeah right? and but it's never going to go as planned yeah. no yeah. we have this whole like like we set ourselves up with a plan like we have expectations at a certain level and like people are really not great at dealing with the gap that exists when the expectation and the reality don't line up Mm. like it's really uncomfortable for people so it sounds almost like what you're describing Mm -hmm. is like what has happened is there's um like what i see with clients a lot is when expectation and reality aren't aligning there's a lot of different things that can happen Mm -hmm. one is like uh, start to externalize. Like it's everybody else's fault. Mm. Like blame happens first. And I do this too. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it's everybody else's fault. And then it's like the shame sets in like, Oh, maybe it is my fault. Oh shoot. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's something wrong with me then Mm -hmm. that like my identity isn't aligning with what I'm expecting of myself. Right. Um, and sometimes because shame is such a strong emotion, there's secrecy. So it's like what might happen is a client might be doing a thing for a long time before they even admit it to me mm-hmm. or admit it to themselves. Mm. And it becomes a thing that then we can address. And so it's like, well, what helps is if we can limit, like expectation and reality are not going to be aligned often. Like that's basically right. the definition of things don't go according to plan. Yeah. And so it was like, what can we do to like calm the nervous system in that moment and then reduce the time between when that realization is met and when we act or do something about it or recognize that either we need to do something to change our reality or something to change expectation. And the people who do this like really well look like superheroes. I mean, they look like, um, what do they call it? Like invincible. Like I remember... Mm-hmm. Um, I worked with crew leaders who did this really well, tree climbers. And what would happen is when you're in a tree working on it, you're up there either in the bucket or you're climbing. Mm-hmm. There's no one else that's up there with you most of the time. You're just up there and you're, it's like the definition of having to figure things out for yourself. Mm. And there would be some crew leaders who would make a cut. The piece wouldn't fall in the right way. And then they're having to like figure out what to do with it and their equipment's in the wrong spot, all this stuff. And it's like the crew leaders who would get really agitated about it. Generally, the jobs would take longer and there would be worse outcomes. Mm. Mm. Like the thing that was a small thing would then turn into a big thing because they panic Mm -hmm. and they try to fix it right away. Mm -hmm. But then the people who I like admired so much and I tried to learn a lot from were the crew leaders who like a thing would happen that clearly wasn't according to their plan, but there was absolutely zero change in body language, like zero change in their behavior. It was just like smooth movement to the Mm. next thing, smooth movement to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And you could tell that it was just like, uh, it was like, okay, that's great. Like now this is my new reality. So here's the next step that I'm going to take. And those jobs, usually the things that were small issues didn't become big ones. And we usually got done faster anyway. And so it's like, yeah, this stuff happens all the time. Like if when expectation and reality for me don't align and that happens, it's like, all right, step one, call the nervous system. Like this isn't a crazy thing. This is figure outable. And then step two, like how can I reduce the time between like some kind of anxiety or panic or like, um, like quick response about that misalignment and how can I just like move smoothly into action? Take some sort of next action. That's right. Like, let me just channel the behavior of Leo, that crew leader who I admired, who would just like, dupe something bad would happen. It would just be on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. So good. I I see you do this. Challenge my inner grandma. (laughs) Right? Yeah, totally. Like in your describing how like I, you know, I'm the kind of person who would, set my clothes out like it's so funny because well I've only known you for less than a year (laughs) almost a year yeah but it's like you've never struck me as like 
the the anxious like the the anxious planning type uh-huh. like you just like you're very chill <laughs> like very go with the flow even though like you set plans yeah. and, like <laughs> you do the thing yeah mm-hmm. yeah that has changed that's uh-huh. yeah <laughs> yes that has changed yeah, yeah. she yeah. doesn't have like she wasn't like super high anxiety but mm-hmm. she did not like change yeah, yeah. no <laughs> I'm no, the same way that. like I was used to be super organized like super and I like organization and planning is still a strong suit of mine mm-hmm. but once you are up in a tree like I remember being up, up in a tree one time and it was my very first crane job which is like there's a giant crane that's coming and removing pieces that you are cutting and so mm. you're cutting these very large pieces at a time and they're literally getting lifted off right in front of your face Oof. so if like the angle's off or like you have a shitty crane operator the communication isn't just right it's like that's it like you're done like it's it can end really poorly those jobs and I just remember being up there and being like you feel the anxiety come up and you're like I remember my very first cut I did with the crane I'm like I have no fucking clue what I'm doing like I'm talking to this guy and like I'm just telling him to like I don't know lift it this way I don't don't know do your crane thing like I'm just gonna make a cut don't hit me don't hit me but like inside like even just thinking about it like I'm remembering of like how the panic was building and it's like oh if I panic in this moment I'm gonna make a shittier cut so I remember having to just like completely channel down like dial mm-hmm, down mm-hmm. and it's amazing like when your life is on the line which is every day doing tree work like when your life is on the line and you have to make decisions that are good decisions it's like it forces you to channel that calm real quick yep. it was basically because of that skill it wasn't the skill of learning to climb a tree or the mm-hmm. skill of like learning to do a bar muscle up or whatever it was that has like advanced me or like forced me to take bigger leaps with my life mm-hmm. it's like learning that like I can stay calm and make good decisions when I don't know all the answers. Yeah. When you know? the place is on fire. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I would not have started my own business had I not made that cut with the crane. Like, yeah. that's yeah. kind of how it goes. Hmm. Did I tell you about the time I almost drowned? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. This is the second time I almost died. No, maybe it's the fourth. I don't know. Anyways. Um, fourth? Yeah, I've had a few. So, You're like a cat. Yeah. Uh, let's hope. <laughs> 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 um, so as you were describing that story, it reminded me of the time that I almost drowned. And it was basically like I was training for, this was not long ago. Um, I was training for the triathlon. Mm. It was maybe, like, I don't know, five years ago or something. I can't, I, I'm, I'm not a great swimmer. And when I started training, I could only swim like two laps in the pool. And then by the end, I was able to swim a mile. But somewhere in the middle, I did an open water swim. And we used to do these open water swims every week. Um, we'd go out to the Berkeley Marina or whatever. And, um, and one day I was late for the swim. And so what happens is you go out with a group of people, they, you swim to a buoy and there's like a kayak that supports you. Right. So I was about 10, 15 minutes late. All the people were out and I'm slow at swimming. Mm -hmm. They were all fast. So they were already at the buoy, like a half mile off the shore. Mm -hmm. And the guy, there was a guy on the the dock. He was like, Oh yeah, that's fine. Go catch up. And I was like, cool. This is like my fifth one or something. And so I get halfway out. And like, I look around and I see nobody and I see nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like out there and I'm like, I just remembered, I just learned how to swim like four weeks ago or yeah. whatever it was. And I just started to like feel this crushing anxiety. Yeah. Cause it's just like, I can't see anyone. Yeah. Everything seems super far away. Yeah. There's no kayak anywhere. Yeah. And I just started sinking. <gasps> right. <laughs> and I, I mean like. I'm thick. I went down. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's no part of me that is buoyant. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, so, and so I was going down and I just, and I was like, okay, if I continue to feel panic, I'm going to die right now. Yeah. yeah. And so like, I wasn't, I wasn't completely submerged yet. So I was just like, okay, what, like, what do I need to do? Or I just lay on my back. Mm. And just like lay it on my back until I could like calm myself down, mm-hmm. just like five, ten seconds. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, I can see back where I started. I'm just gonna turn around and just do one stroke in that direction. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was nervous as hell. Turn yeah. around, did one stroke. Okay, I'm gonna do another stroke. All right, I'm gonna breathe on every stroke. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I'm mm-hmm. gonna do that just to like calm myself down. So it was like one another one another I mean I was back there within like six minutes or something Mm, like that yeah but like if I would have just let myself feel that anxiety I would have gone down and once you take on water yeah it's not coming out yeah (laughs) you know and there's nobody around to like save me right and so it was just like that that sort of feeling 
And it was that, like I had to process it so fast yeah. so that I could figure out what is the next mm-hmm. action. And I think about that often because there's been a lot of times in my life, not life and death, mm-hmm. but a lot of times where it's like, you can spend a week yeah. or two weeks or a month like sitting in a limbo of like, oh, this is so terrible. Mm-hmm. Or you can like process it and then take the next action mm-hmm. to get to where you need to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do th- like what, what you just described is like, okay, this unexpected thing happened to me that's going to change my life forever. Mm-hmm. I need some time to process this. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once you sort of process it and you yeah. do whatever you need to do, like right. it might be a breathing exercise. Mm-hmm. You might go work out, mm-hmm. you know, you might journal about it. I yeah. would sometimes take a walk for, you know, yeah. things like that, mm-hmm. but then you do it and then you're like, okay, I have to take one step forward. Yeah. What's that going to be? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So yeah, that's, I had a little bit of flashback as you were describing. No, it's just, it's really good. I mean, and like in this thing, like you said, like it happens big, these things happen like in big and small ways for people. Even just this weekend is an example of like, I took a trip this weekend and I came back and I didn't really have the energy or like the wherewithal to do a big shop and meal prep on Sunday. And so it was like, I could have kind of panicked and gone into like, what am I going to do mode and like cancel plans that I had with my family for father's day and like take care of that thing. And it was like, I'll figure it out. And like, sure enough, yeah, I like picked up some salad and some rotisserie chicken on Monday. And it was just like, but being like being calm in that moment and like keeping priorities priorities meant that like I got to spend time with my family. I didn't feel guilty about it. I wasn't panicking about the week ahead. And it was like when the time came to get food, like got food. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think, yeah, I I see it a lot with folks like when little things come up. Um, I was just watching a show. I like watching the show Survivor. Oh, okay. So I was just watching this show the other night and there was this challenge where they had to push this giant ball over this obstacle and both teams were trying to do it and it was very clear when they started doing it, like they were just using the wrong technique. And if you had asked those teams if the thing was even possible, like in that moment, they may have said like no, but they had like made the decision based this, this plan was in action, like mm-hmm. the challenge was happening and so it was like, it didn't become a matter of like, do I keep trying or not? It was like, we'll just, we'll figure out a way. There's like no mm-hmm. other way right. and it reminds me of like what happens when obstacles like clients run into obstacles it's like do you accept that like no matter what i'm like i'm getting to the gym and everything else is figure outable yeah. you know or i'm gonna do i'm gonna eat healthy and that can look a bunch of different ways it can be you know long prepared meal or it could be like a thing a healthy thing that you pick up at wendy's right mm-hmm. like it can be all of that it's just like making the decision and then making everything else figure outable yeah 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 and knowing that it's okay to to fail yeah most things are not life and death yeah yeah right? yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, i think this is a great place to end wendy i appreciate you sharing yeah thank that, you that yeah. story that's, that's really great. Really insightful. So many lessons to, to be learned there. Lots of lessons. So, yeah. And you also, need a part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. I also like, I look at what people that have practiced what you just described, I look at what they're capable of mm-hmm. versus people that like spend all of their time planning. And it's like, there's a, there's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have any plans right. because you won't accomplish any big things without some sort of plan right. and right. long-term vision. Right. But like that ability to figure things out and just work through things on the fly, like so much more can get done yeah. <laughs> when yeah. you do that. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's a, it's a muscle worth kind of building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. We will see you next time. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, we've got plenty of others. Go check out this one over here.